Let me begin the discussion on infrastructure and the size of the market. Uh, till now we have seen that how uh, infrastructure helps in developing the economy and this is one of the major uh, boost for the economic growth process in any economy. Today we are uh, going to discuss in brief uh, the meaning and size of the market and what is basically uh, size of the market uh, means when when it is related to the developing and least developed countries. We'll discuss uh, the theoretical microeconomic tools to understand how size of the market works. At the same time, we'll also try to have some discussion on uh, macroeconomic tools to understand the size of the market. Some growth models will be discussed and after that before before summing up the lecture, we will also try to find out what are the main features of the developed countries and how these features are linked with the size of the markets. Let me begin with a discussion on the general meaning of the market. Uh, in economics, market is not a place, but it's an arrangement where buyers and sellers are interacting to find out the prices and quantities of goods and services. So it's a condition, it's a situation where uh, we have the uh, quantity demanded and we have the quantity supplied. So what are basically the component of the market when we say uh, existence of uh, the quantity demanded and supply? So in that case, we, we have to have the existence of demand and the presence of supply. At the same time, institutional framework such as the government policies and the legal framework, infrastructure for functioning, availability of information on prices and cost and the ease of entry and exit in the market and at the same time reliability of contract enforcements. So size of the market depends on what type of government policies are existing in terms of tax. Suppose a government provides a tax holiday situ situation then in that case majority of the investors will try to join the market as an investor. Uh, suppose if the legal framework is clear, if the contract rules are clear for the investor, in that case investor will certainly have a freedom to choose the market. They will have the more flexible options to decide uh, what they have to produce and how they have to produce because rules are clear. But if the rules are not clear, legal framework is not uh, certain, in that case investors will, will really have uh, some constraint in their investment and they will not try to join the market. Uh, if the availability of information on prices of raw materials, the cost of uh, labor and other things are uh, clear in the market, in that case uh, market really works uh, properly. We have seen uh, in our previous discussion that how market fails and how uh, uh, rent seeking behaviors and other uh, important issues are also uh, uh, influencing the size of the market and the existence of the market. In our in our uh, few lectures, we have seen that how some of the factors really lead say very monopolistic conditions uh, uh, in the market, and that is not really providing a competitive price for the consumer. When it comes to the infrastructure development, we have different uh, uh, argument that uh, these infrastructure uh, services and facilities should be provided on a on a on a price and that price should be uh, the price which will be affordable to the majority of, of the people in the developing country uh, when we say size of the market size of the market is is just reflecting in terms of the number of buyers and sellers if uh, if we are adding uh, more uh, more number of consumers and more number of suppliers it means that our, our size of the market is expanding from the previous stage. So there has been shift from the traditional view of the size of the market, which was limited by the national boundaries. Today, when we are more globalized and more integrated uh, uh, in the world, uh, we are not considering the size of the market, which is just related to the, uh, to the country, but we are really considering the size of the market, which is more bigger because uh, uh, we are considering entire globe as the market today. So the size of the market is now linked to the growth and trade openness uh, after 1991 as we have seen that we are more uh, 
uh, open economy today majority of the developing countries are uh, not restricted economy and in that case uh, we have large number of uh, uh, produced uh, uh, large number of products uh, transmitting from one economy to other economy uh, services are crossing the boundaries uh, information technology enabled services are one of the example from india which has attracted many country of many country uh, for for uh, offshore today and this shows that how in certain sectors we have a growing size of the market so the productivity is affected by the size of the market and this is happening when uh, if if you are adding more consumer your productivity a firm's productivity a country's productivity will certainly have expansion if if you are shrinking in in terms of size of the market the productivity has the negative impact because you are losing your consumer so size of the market do influence the productivity and productivity uh, when you have uh, reducing cost uh, of the production uh, it it cannot happen when you are not adding the large number of consumer in the market so what are basically the indicators if one can say that what are the indicators of expansion in the size of the market so one can say that gdp uh, per cap capita or gdp as a whole or the growth of gdp uh, gross fixed capital formation savings and investments and household consumptions that is also some of the indicators to find out the size of the market at the same time we can also see the quality of infrastructure global connectivity and infrastructure stock to gdp ratio as as an indicator to find out how infrastructure is really added uh, as a part of the uh, expansion in the in the economy and uh, if quality of the infrastructure global connectivity and uh, uh, total infrastructure stock to gdp ratio is increasing that is also one of the indicator to say that infrastructure uh, has enhanced compared to the previous level of uh, 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 previous level of availability of the infrastructure and that shows that uh, it has the chance to expand the size of the market so uh, if we can find out uh, uh, the size of the market the discussion on size of the market in the traditional literature in economics in in 17th uh, 76 adam smith stated that the division of labor is limited by the extent of the market and the size of the market leads to an increase in the division of labor and it contributes to an increase in the firm's productivity so productivity is affected by the size of the market because huge markets allow firms to exploit economies of a scale so if uh, uh, if the size of the market is uh, limited to to a particular town or limited to a particular city if it is not added more consumers outside the city outside the town in that case productivity is going to be affected so infrastructure stocks uh, basically renders increasing returns to a scale and the quality of infrastructure and ease of global connectivity has become important factor in determining the size of the market today so infrastructure and size of the market the adequate infrastructure is vital for assuring the functioning of the economy because infrastructure decides the location of economic activity by limiting the area over which factors of production are mobile and eventually uh, it also determines the size of the market so quality infrastructure uh, really uh, reduces the cost through uh, integrating and connecting the national market to other markets to other economies and the regions of the world an effective transport infrastructure helps in getting goods and services to the market in a secure and timely manner and it facilitates the mobility of the workers transport and communications infrastructure networks are prerequisites for enlarging the size of the market since they provide valuable informations for the decision maker in terms of business and increasing economic efficiency so uh, in 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 macroeconomic theory we can see here that uh, in terms of production function and iso product curve a firm produces uh, a particular goods using combination of inputs such as capital and labor uh, so uh, q is the function of k and l well the where the k is capital and l is the labor so if it is iso product curve q0 which is again the function of capital and labor 
and uh, in this figure one can see here that uh, uh, on on a particular curve such such as uh, q0 uh, the two different points are shown here and that shows the two different level of combination between the capital and labor on point a we are we are showing here the k2 and l1 level of, level of combination of capital and labor while on b point b we are seeing k1 and l2 level of capital and labor combinations and it shows that the total product or output remains constant because isoproduct curves are the are the curves where uh, on a particular curve any point on a particular curve shows the equal level of productivity but when we move from the lower level of quantity lower level of iso product uh, pr product curve to the higher level of iso product curve we have the increasing uh, productivity in the market this is uh, this is at the firms level but but even if uh, this can be shown at the countries level iso product iso product curve uh, this can be also this can be also shown at the uh, nas national level or the entire economic level because if we are enhancing from q0 to q1 or q1 to q2 in this particular diagram we are finding that uh, uh, economy has moved from or the firm has moved from the previous level of uh, productivity to the new level of productivity more we are going on the right hand side more we are having the uh, productivity added and certainly the higher iso product curve shows us a high level of uh, combination between the capital and labor which produces the higher level of product in the market so this also uh, establishes the expansion in the size of the market because a, a, a productivity uh, enhancement in the productivity is not possible a producer cannot afford to go on the higher productivity level if the productivity is not really uh, beneficial for them so another tool is the returns to scale where we can also see that uh, returns to scale of the production function Uh, determine how long run output varies from the varying all the factors of production or the inputs so there are three types of returns to a scale increasing decreasing and constant when we are saying uh, increasing it means that the capital and labor uh, uh, the the uh, the price of the capital and labor uh, in table 1 uh, it is shown here that if all the inputs capital and labor are multiplied by a positive constant p where p is greater than 1 the output varies differently so if the uh, if the if after multiplying with p uh, if the output is equal to uh, equal to the previous level of uh, capital and labor uh, 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 the product uh, by the capital and labor so in that case we are having the constant returns but when we are having uh, uh, compared to the previous level of capital and labor Uh, product uh, if it is it has increased productivity in that case we are having more uh, increasing returns because whatever inputs we are uh, putting for the cable uh, for the capital and labor we are having more output coming out from the capital and output uh, from the capital and labor uh, in case if if the returns are not uh, increasing not constant it will finally have the decreasing trend and that is uh, the three different level of returns to a scale uh, which which again gives us the idea uh, especially at the firms level that where uh, one has to continue in the production or one has to leave the production if if there are re decreasing returns to a scale the producer will not try to continue in the market because uh, the productivity has declined from the input level from the level of the uh, uh, input so in in such cases uh, one cannot continue in the market because the returns to scale will be decreasing so some other macroeconomic issues and the size of the market uh, are uh, like many countries has adopted different models to expand their size of the market uh, united kingdom had the unilateral trade liberalization uh, restricted uh, uh, imports for many other countries but uh, enhancing exports for for only for the united kingdom and this continued for many years us and germany in 19th century adopted the protectionism to promote industry japan from 1950s to 1960 has also uh, contributed the protectionism south korea korea 1960s to 70s continued with the protectionism southeast asian economies has also developed 
uh, their economy with uh, protectionism and strategic trade policies. And China and India also adopted the selective protection and control over FDI. So one major indicator is the trade openness. Uh, more we are having the trade openness, more we can have the uh, addition in the size of the market. So foreign trade to gross domestic product ratio is generally known as the trade openness. It is the ratio of sum of exports and imports to the gross domestic products. And for this, the formula will be trade openness is equal to export plus import divided by GDP multiplied by 100. It is a measure of country's integration in the world economy. So the evidence for trade liberalization boosted growth, which has remained mixed, high performing Asian economies uh, uh, policy uh, reforms were followed by a large increase in the openness. This proved that it is possible to develop through export oriented growth. However, such high growths were invisible in Latin American economies such as Mexico and Brazil. So the trade openness is important, but economies needs other supporting factors like quality infrastructure and policy framework to accelerate it, to, 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 expide, to expide, expedite the high growth uh, uh, process. So if one can have the look on the trade openness of selected countries, uh, the uh, index for India was 18.79 in 2000, which has raised to the new level of 41.46. Uh, in 2012, while in China 37.11 uh, was in 2000, which has raised to 48.36 percent. While one can see here the Germany, which was 53.2 in 2000, now it has 75.18. While the Thailand 101.77 percent is has uh, it has now gone to 130.47 percent. While the Hong Kong 449 percent and Singapore 358 percent. So compared to Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, uh, even the Germany, India and China is still and Brazil is not really as trade open as these smaller economies, uh, especially uh, in terms of the size of the consumers. So uh, this shows that uh, still certain protectionism is going on and this is the data from the uh, World Trade Organization and uh, this establishes the fact that uh, some of the economies are really more trade open and they are really added uh, uh, their consumers outside their domestic economy due to their export promotion mechanism, export promotion model. And uh, that, is the, uh, that is their strategy to have the expansion of the size of the market. Some of the growth models, if we can see here, one of the very traditional growth model is the Herod Dahmer growth model. Uh, uh, this growth model is formulated by Herod and Dahmer in 1940s and widely used in the planning in developing countries. Uh, it is uh, one of the model of the closed economy. Uh, so the equation of this model is uh, uh, delta y by y is equal to a small s by k where the uh, delta y by y is the rate of growth of GNP while the s is the saving ratio and k is the capital output ratio. So saving is necessary for the investment. That is basically uh, the model explains the mechanism by which by which investment leads to the growth. Uh, investment in 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 uh, industry, investment in infrastructure, or investment in agriculture, or especially investment in the uh, in the entire growth process matters. That is really the outcome of this model. Uh, so for instance, if uh, capital output ratio K is 4 and saving ratio is 8% uh, of GNP, the growth rate uh, delta Y by Y will be equal to S by K, uh, 8 by 4, that is 2%. So what are basically the implications of a Herod Dahmer model? So savings are necessary for every economy, even to sustain the existing capital stocks. But to grow at a faster rate, investment in new capital stocks such as uh, uh, buildings, ports, railways, waterways, telecom, etc. are fundamental. So the trick of the growth is thus the national savings and investments in the capital stocks. So there are constraints to the growth. GNP growth is not uh, linearly related to the share of investment expenditure in the GNP. Uh, low saving rate in developing countries gives rise to the saving gap. 
Saving and investment is a necessary condition but not a sufficient condition for economic growth. And there are leakages and injections in the economy. Another model is the Nuxi model where he has uh, again argued for the balanced growth theory. Uh, the theory suggests that there is a need for large investment in all sectors simultaneously to achieve economic growth and development. This will certainly expand the size of the market and increase the productivity and will incent incentivize the private investments. It also stresses on the balance between the social and economic overheads and between direct productive investment and external economies. So uh, balance is required between the demand and supply in the economy. Emphasis is on the simultaneous development of intermediate goods, power, irrigation, transport, etc. and all other industries including consumer and capital goods. Uh, more or less synchronized application of capital to a wide range of different industries uh, are important for this particular balance in the in the economic growth process. So if one can see here the vicious circle of the underdevelopment, the low productivity really generates low level of income. Low level of income again uh, provides a, a condition of low savings. That low saving leads to the low investment and low investment again uh, again uh, makes us the situation of capital deficiency and we are uh, trapped basically many least developed countries in developing countries are trapped in the low productivity uh, vicious circle of low productivity and that is really the uh, vicious circle of underdevelopment. So this Nuxi model uh, focuses on how a small size of the market in underdeveloped countries creates a vicious circle of underdevelopment and the size of the market can be enlarged through the large investment in different sectors of the economy and expanding of the economic infra infrastructure. So uh, the deadlock in the development cannot be addressed if the investment is not really coming to a different part of the economy such as a small industry, higher, uh, large industry and outside the agriculture sector. So the size of the market will expand and the economy will develop if the productivity levels rise in an underdeveloped economy uh, and this productivity rise in the productivity, productivity level is not automatic but it is dependent on how much investment and, uh, and uh, what type of investment is received in, in which sector. So when it, it happens then the, uh, then the returns to scale uh, starts, uh, starts uh, coming to the economy and uh, this automatically leads to the expansion in the size of the market. One more model is the rogerstein Jordan model where uh, this model underlines that underdeveloped economy requires a large amount of investment. Uh, the major argument of the Rodin model is the contention of of the social marginal product of, a, of an investment and the private marginal products. Private individuals stresses on the uh, private marginal product of their investment and neglects the social marginal products and that is true uh, in case of uh, varieties of uh, uh, externalities especially the negative externalities is happening because, uh, because private marginal product are more important for the investors and they really avoid the social marginal product. So rogerstein Jordan model is basically an investment model and sets the conditions of takeoff and this has emphasized on the multiplier effect of investment. Uh, the individualistic, uh, the, the individual, individualities and the external economies from minimum amount of investments are required for achieving economic development and uh, uh, three major uh, individuality of the production function is the supply of social overhead, uh, invisibility of demand and the uh, indivisibility in the supply of savings. So high initial investments in social overhead capital is needed for the growth and high investment will enlarge the markets and lead to the growth and development. Rogerstein-Rudin model and the size of the market is again summarized in a way that investment in one sector increases the demand for other sectors and uh, uh, it directly uh, uh, the investment in one sector increases the demand for other sector directly and 
so makes larger scale production in other sectors more at attractive it is important to have uh, the ongoing investment and the complementarities between the simultaneous different sectors which is the rational for large scale plant industrialization gets magnified through the size of the market so high priority is given to the infrastructural development and industry uh, and uh, this cannot uh, this cannot uh, happens this, this 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 is not possible without uh, the large pool of investment added in uh, added in uh, in the production sector also in the infrastructure sector so important way to achieve growth and enlarge the size of the market is to build infrastructure such as rail roads or public utilities and infrastructure facilities bear the fixed cost of industrial plants and creates an environment that will be profitable for all the firms this will result in more investments in the industrial sector there are some certain features of the developed countries such as the high growth rates of output per capita rapid increase in the total factor productivity structural transformations social and ideological transformations search for markets and raw materials and limited benefits of economic growth uh, high growth of output and increase in total factor productivity merits the huge markets for their products and uh, this is uh, this requires the structural transformations transformation of their economy it is possible by investments in capital stocks such as roads sports railways communication networks utilities etc market expansion through the exploring new areas and economic integration and uh, many developing and less developed countries are following uh, such as steps which were taken by the developed countries in past and uh, this is not possible without uh, without the linking infrastructure with the economic growth and development Uh, to sum up economic decisions are limited by the size of the market which in turn is decided by the stock of the infrastructure so uh, we have also seen in case of newly industrialized countries uh, the growth model of the newly industrialized countries that how uh, size of the market was really uh, 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 size of the market has really played an important role uh, in terms of uh, more gdp more gdp per capita and in terms of consumption indicators and this large investments are required in the social overhead capital we have also seen that uh, uh, these countries have not only developed uh, their physical infrastructure but also the social infrastructure so both uh, 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 investment in both the side physical as well as the social infrastructure side really enlarged the size of the market and that accelerated uh, that really uh, uh, speed up the process of economic growth and development so the quality infrastructure increases the size of the market and attract investment for industrial development that is uh, uh, really the uh, the one line uh, conclusion of this particular lecture and uh, uh, a, a country uh, cannot really come up a country cannot really uh, grow faster Uh, cannot really have more income generation uh, and the productivity growth without uh, having the expansion in the size of the market and uh, the expansion of the size of the market cannot happen uh, it cannot be possible without having the quality infrastructure added and this quality infrastructure includes the physical as well as the social infrastructure thank you